All right, what's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Time Out with Doc and Caveman. As always, you are here with Dr. Fantasy and my co-host, the Fantasy Caveman. Before we get her rolling here, I just want to remind everybody to subscribe to our YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts to make sure you get a notification anytime we post any new NBA content. But with that being said, today we are... Almost wrapping up our NBA prospect profiles. Today we're talking about consensus top five prospect Jalen Green, 6'6 six, six wing with a 6'8 wing span, wing guard, whatever you want to call him. Uh, he played for the G League Ignite last season in their developmental program. While there, he averaged 17.9 points, 4.1 rebounds, 46% from the field, 36.5% from three, and then 82.9% from the free throw line. Not too shabby there. So, Caveman, what kind of interesting fun fact do you have on what I'm assuming is going to be one of your boys, Jalen Green? Oh, yeah. very. We just got done doing a couple of pods on guys that we knew were your guys. So Yeah. <laughs> It's only fair. Uh, so, Jalen Green's favorite players growing up were MJ, Kobe, and Kevin Durant. Anybody good or no? And no, nobody good. Just those, <laughs> just those three guys. Those, those. No. So you know, so it's not, it's not, it's not like you know. He looked up to anybody good. Yeah, that Just, sucks. So, yeah, and you already mentioned, this is definitely one of my guys. And when we're, when I, I, I'm Detroit at number one, I'm not automatically taking Kate Cunningham. I'm looking at Jalen uh, Green as well, but we know, we, we know Kate Cunningham's going in the way. Uh, what I, Here's the the biggest thing with Jalen Green that I'm a huge fan of is when he when he gets inside and he's great inside. He shoots almost seventy percent in the paint, which is pretty good. I think you would say right. That's 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 not bad. Seventy percent from in the side. Decent. Paint. Decent. Uh, but when he gets inside, he knows how to use his uh use his body to avoid contact you know he, he contorts and twists uh his body in order to avoid contact to finish at the rim i think that's you know there's a lot of guys a lot of guys built like him kind of go inside and then get like eaten up mm -hmm. and like nothing happens he's able to avoid bigger guys and get in the paint and get his get it to go uh as evident by his his 70% from inside the paint. Uh, he, I, he's excited. He's just exciting to watch a lot of, uh, see, he makes a lot of highlight as you can see, as he does a nice alley-oop there. Uh, very highlight real and electric, uh, which is weird. He played for the G league ignite. So that's <laughs> the name that the team he was on just kind of fits him. Uh, but the, just the highlight reel plays he makes all the time. And then he's a, he's very not – and we'll talk about when he, when we get to weaknesses. So he's not, he's not great at creating shots for others, but he's excellent at creating shots for himself. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure that's one thing you're not a huge fan of. But he has, he has the hardened step back. He has that nailed down. Let's just end this episode then, because I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> a Harden step back, nailed down, and we know how lethal that's been with James Harden using it for the past. Yeah, not years. very good. You're right. Yeah, he not nah, having the Harden step, but he has it like, like I'm talking. He has like he doesn't almost as good as James Harden does. So to have that at only what he's only 19 to have that 19, master yeah. at 19 at the next level, that's just. That's going to be a big tool for him going forward. Caveman, okay, I thought you were going to use your favorite term, three-level scoring. He didn't say three-level scorer. I did not say three-level scorer. I know, right? 
I'm disappointed, but that's the first thing that I said about him. I mean, I think that he has abilities at all three levels. You mentioned his ability to create shots for himself. He's a good three-point shooter, and I think he can be even better, honestly. Yeah. I mean, especially based on his free throw percentage. But, uh, I mean, he's an explosive player, and mm-hmm. we I feel like we've mentioned it a few times. Sometimes athletes don't know how to use their explosiveness and athleticism to get to the rim. Or they're out of control. <laughs> so there's, you know, but he's in between. He plays with explosiveness, but he plays with it under control and uses it to get to the basket. And I, I think that's really hard to teach somebody. So he really has that natural scoring ability. And I mean, he has the upside to where he can be a top 10, maybe even a top five scorer in this no, league. Just, I mean, he has in the paint and he just gets around him. Yeah, I mean, he has, you know, that's having a good feel. That's offensive IQ to a certain point and knowing how to score and get around and looking, seeing angles and knowing how to use your body and athleticism to get around. So, I mean, there's different ways to have a high offensive IQ. It can be as a playmaker. It can be as a scorer. But I'd say he has a high scoring IQ, which I don't think we've ever said that before. But I do. I see that. He just... I did. I think I just made that up, but I, you know what I mean? I think it makes sense yeah. when you think about it. Um, and I do, I see a lot of that from him. I do think he has some playmaking ability. It's not his strength right now, but he has instances where he sets his team, you know, as he just sets up the transition with a nice pass there. So I did not plan that, but like talking about stuff as it happens on the highlight. I love it. It's almost like I planned that, even though I didn't eat in the slightest. But, yeah, I mean, so I think there's a lot to like as a scorer. Now, have we talked about his defense yet? No, we have not. But let's talk about it now with his weaknesses. Um, I mean, it's similar to any, uh, it seems like, of these Not honestly this year. One of the things I've been super encouraged about this year when I feel like this is the first top, top prospect we've talked about that is just really not good defensively and shows no uh, interest in playing defense. So I'm encouraged. Maybe we're turning the corner now, but realistically, Jalen Green is a modern scorer in this league. So, I mean, most teams are not going to care about his defensive ability at his age but with his athleticism if he's put in the right system and if he decides to have any interest in playing defense he could be an elite defender honestly with the way that he's built so and uh so i hope that he does develop into that someday but i personally wouldn't be optimistic saying that but yeah i mean he has a lack of awareness honestly slash interest is the best way to describe it he just it's like he's there but he's just thinking about the next offensive possession for being honest about it um the other thing that we've mentioned him getting to the basket i could see him struggling a little more at the next level if he doesn't add a little bit of strength to his frame yeah and we've mentioned it before, not the biggest concern because that's something that can be worked on with an NBA that's training. Not, that's not, I mean, while, I mean, it's going to take a lot of work for him to put it in, but at the same time, putting on weight and strength is one of the easiest things you can work yeah. on. With I'll tell Kevin Durant that because he's never done it. So, <laughs> but Kevin Durant's been okay. So. <laughs> but Kevin Durant's also much longer than Jalen Green is. But yeah, I mean, I think if he wants to make uh, or be a force down in the paint like he's been thus far in his career, then he's definitely going to have to add a little bit a little bit of strength. But I mean, you have to also we haven't really talked about it with these G League players, but they're playing against a higher level of competition than a lot of these college players. So he's had success against you know guys that are more grown more developed and he had a lot of success honestly i mean averaging almost 18 points his percent even his three point percentage at 36 and a half it's not terrible it's definitely not terrible it's respectable and there's a lot to be said if you can you know he was probably 18 turning 19 during the season or you know whatever he was Either way, I mean, he's a young guy playing in this league, and he, I mean, he was impressive overall, and I think you have to give him a little bit of credit for that as well. Yeah, and that's that's the one of the things that we haven't really mentioned with uh, these guys is the 
to have him playing in the G League, you know, and that's another debate on what the better route is for these top prospects to go. But I think, I definitely think he made the right decision going into the G League because I think that helped his draft stock a, a bit more. Uh, you mentioned, you mentioned this defense. It's not great. And surprised that he's one of the guys I like because, you know, I'm not, I, there's not a lot of defensive players that I like. You, you kind of, figure I'm more focused on the offensive game. That's kind of where I'm, where I'm at. But I think I think he'll get his – you mentioned his shooting. It needs – he just needs – he's one of those guys that you just, it just needs to be consistent. Uh, and you saw his, when he, since he shot almost 83% of the line, there is nothing wrong with his form at all. I think it's one of those just hit the gym and just chuck up threes during practice. Uh, and then, uh, we talked about defense, his, he's not very quick laterally. He struggles with closeouts, just being a little more specific on what, uh, is wrong with him defensively. Uh, he is going to have to, he, I love him, but he doesn't have Kevin Durant level scoring ability where he can just completely ignore the defense. He's going to have to at least become slightly below average he needs to he just at least needs to not be one of the worst to play defensive players in the league that's all he needs to be <laughs> Fair. So, he does, so he needs to improve a tiny bit uh so but yeah so you but his weaknesses and this is one of the reasons why i really love him, his weaknesses you know, with the defense, with the weight, and just the shooting, his defenses are probably three of the most easily not not easily because it's going to take a lot of hard work, but definitely some of the more correctable weaknesses that you can have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would uh, I would agree with that, and I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, and it's similar to it reminds me of when we talked about Anthony Edwards, honestly, a little bit last season. There's literally no doubt in my mind he's going to be an elite scorer at the next level. I said that with Anthony Edwards. They're not my kind of players, but there's no doubt in my mind he's going to be an elite scorer in this league. So, I mean, there's a lot to be said for that. So, with the ideal fit, I mean, in my opinion, you could literally just list the top five teams. But um, I think it's an easy decision. I don't think the Rockets need to overthink this if we're being real about it. If Cade Cunningham's off the board... They're, I, I, and we haven't talked about this guy yet, but apparently the Rockets are also really looking at Evan Mobley. But I'd much rather the Rockets go and get this guy. Yeah, and uh, I would like Evan Mobley, but I mean, to me, Jalen Green, I mean, is a surefire offensive threat in, at the next level. He's a guy that legitimately they need a superstar. This is a guy that's definitely, I mean, not definitely going to be a superstar, but he definitely has that kind of upside. And they have plenty, they have two more late first round picks. This is a team that should trade up and pick up another high upside player. If they, they packaged up, I think they have 22, 23, I want to say off the top of my head, somewhere in that range, 23, 24, close enough. Uh, if they package those two picks up, they can worry about getting a high level role player. But number two, to me, Jalen Green is the number two prospect in this draft. You go out and get him. Don't overthink it. So to me, the Rockets, they need a guard. They need scoring. They need more punch. Go get him. He's right there. Because apparently John Wall doesn't exist anymore. John Wall exists, but if he's your only offensive threat, you're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, I th- honestly think it's – if he doesn't go to the Rockets, the Magic will very easily scoop him up if given the chance. Uh, but I don't, I don't think he slides that far. I honestly don't think he go. I don't – the Rockets, you know, with their questionable decisions lately, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe they're stupid and don't take them. But yeah, I mean, it's I, similar to like last year when Lamelo went number three. Like, though, that wasn't the Hornets' biggest need, but like, you don't pass up on that. And it's similar. Like, I don't think he'd fall, fall past three because if Mobley goes two, I know Cleveland doesn't necessarily need him, but like, you don't pass up on that. Yeah. I mean, you you figure yeah. it out. You think because if you're Cleveland, you're you're most like they're 
I doubt Garland and Sexton are both going to be on the team next year. So one of them's most likely going to be gone. So you're going to so you're going to then have a need for a guy like Jalen. So I yep. I don't see him going past number two. I think he easily should go to the Rockets, but definitely doesn't fall outside the top three. There's no way. Yep. All right, let's go over some NBA comparisons then. One that I would think, you brought up this name before, and this time I actually see it, just with how explosive he is and how many highlights he creates. I mean, I'm not angry if you say Vince Carter in this one, honestly. I think that he is, I can't even remember who you brought up Vince Carter for before. I don't because know who did I say. I don't want to even think about it, but uh, this is the, I do see a lot of highlight worthy plays from Jalen green here. So I don't think that's a bad comparison. Um, the number one name that I wrote down after I watched all his film was Donovan Mitchell. Once mm-hmm. again, just a three level scorer. Donovan Mitchell, uh, has actually developed into a league average defender. I looked it up a few weeks ago when we were having a debate, but Donovan Mitchell was literally exactly average as a defender. And I think that Jalen green, yeah, Jalen Green definitely has that kind of ability if he chooses to have that kind of ability. Average defender. That says that's, that's all you need to know about his defensive ability. Uh, yeah, and honestly, with his scoring ability, that's all that you need. But uh, I see a lot of Donovan Mitchell. And then I did want to throw out a low-end comparison. Another uh-huh. guy who just opted out of his contract or declined his option today was very explosive for the Trailblazers last year, average 18 points for him, but a guy like Norman Powell. So I'm not a superstar, not a star, but just a really high level scorer, explosive plays in the NBA. So that was my low end was Norman Powell for him. All right. So I, my, I have, uh, my, my, my low end is, uh, is Jordan Clarkson. Okay. Fair. Uh, that I mean, I did I I didn't want to even go that low on him if we're being honest. I mean, not no offense to Jordan Clarkson, but I think I honestly think his his floor is a star in this league. I don't see how he does not become a star. Uh, but Jordan Clarkson as the absolute bottom floor. Jordan Clarkson, you know, we I, I feel like either in some form or way, shape, or form. Me and you have brought up Jordan Clarkson a couple of times since we've been doing these pods when we talk about these kind of guards that have all this scoring ability. Uh, so I see some Jordan Clarkson. I also... I'm, I'm curious to what you think about this one. What do you think about uh, Ja Morant? Yeah, I mean, Jaws a little slower. I think that he's a little bit better of a playmaker. But yeah, I mean, I I'm, I would be lying if it didn't cross my mind. Explosiveness, you know, they both. John Morant's very good at finishing inside. Uh, I think George, I think John Morant's gonna is gonna be imp- is gonna improve as a three point shooter. Uh, so that's kind of that's kind of where I. And then I'm not comparing him to this guy. But I see shades of Kobe. Remember coming out of height. Remember coming out. Kobe wasn't a good defender. That is something that Kobe worked on, and we don't know. We don't know. There's not a ton, so we don't know what Jalen Green's effort is like at this point. But if he puts in like as much work as Kobe did on the defensive end of the floor, you know, I think. With his offensive ability, I, I, I see shades of Kobe. Not comparing him to Kobe, but I definitely see where some people would say he has Kobe elements. You kind of went out there. You said he was better than Kobe, is what I heard. Is that, is that what you wanted me to say? Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. So, okay, I think that's it. We've. I feel like this was way too positive, and I'm kind of disappointed in that. So... Uh, that's it for <laughs> Jalen Green. Make sure you guys subscribe. We'll have Evan Mobley and Cade Cunningham coming out next. Uh, so make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for those, and we'll see you guys then. Yeah.